I'm Ryan and this is 52 SE Friday week two. What is a Twilight Predator tank? What are the challenges to this style of tank and how do we intend to solve them? All that is coming up. A Twilight Predator tank is where elegance meets spooky, slow, methodical, almost rhythmic animals that most of the time look fairly harmless but there's an ominous sense of danger about them. Their prey often vanish before they even know what happened. The twilight element embraces that these animals are often nocturnal in nature and ambush predators. The eel, often hard to spot, powerful but shy, living in small caves and harmless as long as they don't mistake you for food. If you see one out of their caves, they often move with a mesmerizing type of elegance and often the coolest thing you will have seen that day. If you're lucky, you can even catch them interacting with other marine life. The lionfish, also a slow, methodical animal, sometimes seen cruising, just observing the surroundings, other times actively hunting for its next meal. The lionfish owns its space on the reef and draws the eye. You can often see groups of them hanging out together under caves and ledges, as well as interacting with the rest of the reef. The grouper, a beautiful fish in its own right, can be seen cruising the reefs, also owning its space. Most of the other fish instantly knowing to give it a wide berth and stay out of its way. But they are predators and can become instantly aggressive. Many are ambush predators just waiting for the right moment for a meal to swim by. Like lionfish, often seen hanging under ledges when resting. Time to see all of this come together into an inspiration for a marine tank that features them all in their best light. How do we build a habitat for these animals? What kind of rockscape serves their natural behavior, fits their size and territory needs, yet looks awesome at the same time? Our solution starts with one of the biggest ready-to-ship tanks out there with the Red Sea 210 Reefer S1000. We want space for these guys to move around and show us their beauty. Eels are almost always found curled up in a cave formation that's large enough to fit its entire body with just its head out. We attempted to recreate that look with the Carib Sea Life Rock, mostly comprised of the arches with a few pieces of this standard dry rock. This effect was particularly easy to achieve with the arches because they're thin and they have this natural shape. Result is a big cave with multiple entry and exit points. Lionfish are very often found under the ledges and groupers have very similar behavior, alternating from the open water to hiding under these ledges. We attempted to recreate that, but this time something much bigger and more open. We wanted an area for ambush predators to hide in plain sight. It is a display and we want to see them. The foundation of this structure is the 24 inch XL arch with smaller arches connecting to it. The entire habitat or aquascape is made out of 70% arches, 20% standard rock or shelf. The complete how-to on building aquascapes like this one with easy to use kit rock will be part of the 52SE series. I've always wanted to use Hawaiian black sand and I found my very first real opportunity with it in this tank. We selected it to complete the spooky dark look of this tank and not reflect up white light. Normally I'd never pick black sand because you can't use a magnet cleaner with it without scratching the glass, but the lower lighting for this tank will make cleaning the glass a much less frequent event. A cleaning rod like the Continuum Aqua Scraper is an acceptable option for me in this case. There's nothing photosynthetic in the display, but we do have lighting goals. We want the perfect shimmer and that twilight look, the heart of a twilight predator tank. Our solution to that is Kessel A360s. The Kessel produces unarguably the best shimmer of any light out there. What many reefers don't know is how to tune that shimmer. Shimmer is all personal preference and the color intensity knobs will provide the desired brightness and shade of blue. The perfect shimmer, the result of adjustments and tuning how light passes through the surface ripples, which are lenses that focus that pinpoint of light into shimmer lines. A turbulent surface flow creates a glittery shimmer. Slow surface ripples create a slower rhythmic shimmer line. Mounting heights softening or sharpening the intensity of those lines. For an even more dramatic effect, you can use Kessel's reflectors to focus the light. Highlight specific structures, create intentional shadows, and sharpen the shimmer lines. In this case, we're looking for slow, tranquil lines, almost mesmerizing look. We're going to perfect it in this tank. Getting oxygen into the water and carbon dioxide out for healthy respiration is core to the animal's health, keeping it alert and active. Surface turnover at the top of the tank is where a lot of that gas exchange happens. But in this case, the surface flow will be minimal to support that twilight look. Our solution, the right protein skimmer, creating millions of tiny bubbles a minute and whisking them together to transfer O2 oxygen from the air into the water and CO2 carbon dioxide out of the water. The MaxSpec Air Aqua Duo is selected for its recirculating design, number of bubbles, contact time, and tank turnover in a space-saving design appropriate for an under-tank install. It's a DC pump with two outputs on one motor and a recirculating valve. 
Once we get livestock in the tank, we'll show you how to set it up right for this application, balanced with its other purpose, filtration. In the advent of a power outage, gas exchange and oxygen is the number one concern for the animals. Some states are worse than others, but the average household in the U.S. has at least one five to eight hour power outage every year. Many while you're at work or sleeping. In the case of this tank, both of the vortex will be automatically powered on by the battery backup and bridge the gap until the power comes back on. As soon as we're able, we're likely to move one of the vortex to the surface for better performance, making longer terms plan when necessary, which is very rare in our location. One of the attractive components of the Twilight display is there's almost no calcium and alkalinity dosing or testing needs, certainly not frequently. Water changes will probably do it, but if required, a periodic manual dose of any bicarb-based two-part just a handful of times a year. The only meaningful element uptake should really only be whatever the refugium and catomorpha takes up. Brightwell's Cato Grow is our chosen solution for keeping the Cato healthy and a high performance filter. For stable salinity, we implemented the gravity fed ATO based on the Tunes Oscillator and the pump replaced with the water valve solenoid and the float valve redundancy that comes with the Red Sea sump. The reservoir is hooked up directly to an RODI system, so we never have to add or fill top off water ever. Each of the sumps in the eight different tanks here are different, so you'll see the full how to's on a variety of these types of installs throughout the series. The biggest challenge is these large predators can sometimes be difficult to get to eat. The best solution for that is sourcing the fish from someone who ensures that they're healthy, acclimated from the wild, and eating before they ship, and then after counsel on their dietary needs and what to do when they arrive because they may temporarily stop eating after transport. Marine Collectors is who we use for that service. There's a cost, but I want to get animals from someone who respects the animals and cares if I'm successful with them. You'll hear what they share with us, including best practices, if you source your fish elsewhere. With big animals comes big waste. Big waste means big pollution. There may only be a few animals in the tank, but we'll be putting far more than the equivalent of a cube of mysis in the tank. In the past, algae and nutrients controlled how reefers fed the tank. Those days are over. Today, the animal's biology and nutritional needs dictate how we feed it, and then we implement the right filtration to export it. Our method is called SPDID, short for suspension, particulate organics, dissolved organics, inorganic nutrients, and dilution. We get the waste suspended with a couple of vortex aimed at the holes in the side of the aquascape to get the waste out of the caves where it's most likely to collect. Vortex simply because we don't want to see irregular cords hanging down two thirds of the tank. We'll also use a pair of Gyre Cloud 350s for after hours cleaning. We don't want the excess flow to mess with the shimmer, so we'll be turning the gyres on when the lights are off. I believe we'll be able to achieve the goal with long alternating gyre sweeping the sand of waste to get it suspended. But we may need to use the four aimable heads on the gyre to get the flow where we need it. Once the animals are in the tank, we'll see how this turns out. That now suspended particulate organic matter will be removed with the Red Sea Reef Mat, which catches the uneaten food particles and waste before it has a chance to break down and pollute the tank, and then automatically rolls them right out of the tank. Dissolved organic matter removed or oxidized with the max Spec Air Aqua Duo Skimmer and the Ozotec Ozone Generator. The skimmer removes dissolved proteins and other dissolved organics, the result of food waste breaking down. The ozone oxidizes yellow pigments and other contaminants in the water to keep the water crystal clear. The recirculating design of the skimmer, ideal for ozone, increasing contact time and reducing what gets into the surrounding air. We'll start by using the ozone only one hour a night. Redundancy with ORP control in the apex. That one hour controlled implementation has been safe and effective in our experiments. This tank is bigger though than our experiments, so we'll share the exact implementation as things progress. Inorganic nutrients, nitrate and phosphate are removed with the refugium area, catomorpha growth and harvesting. Our lighting solution, the Kessel Tuna Sun. We've had a lot of success with the high powered refugium model, but in more recent experiments, the Tuna Sun, a full spectrum option, has outperformed it in my own preferred method. We'll explore those results in the science episodes. The sump that houses all that, a big, largely open glass box that comes with the Red Sea and dual core 20 return pumps for redundancy. Our solution to dilution, water changes in that catch-all peace of mind, AWC auto water changes of 1.25% a day, which caps dissolved pollution accumulation of any kind to no more than would naturally accumulate in two months and very, very low levels. If needed, we can adjust it to 2% daily and cap it at one month's accumulation. 
AWC provided with the Neptune dose and routed along the baseboards and painted replenishment water Tropic Marines Coral Pro, the SPDID method of pollution control may sound aggressive, but meets our goal of biology first feeding while maintaining a pristine display, limited algae, slimes, and limited cleaning or elbow grease required. Our goal is to respect that the animals live in this display and provide the same low pollution, high quality water they would find in nature. Parasites are not huge issues with the types of animals going into these tanks, but reducing parasite problems starts at introduction. We're sourcing our animals from marine collectors who proactively treats the animals for parasites commonly found in marine aquaria, ick, brook, velvet, flukes, and uranema. However, we'll teach you how to do what they do at home as well. It's a lot easier than you probably thought. However, no protocol is perfect, and these tanks come in contact with other tanks here at the facility, so our approach incorporates UV sterilization, which when implemented correctly, prevents a vast majority of parasites found in the water column from reproducing to the point that they become a problem. We're using a 57 watt aqua ultraviolet UV. This is oversized to our tank size because the compact high output model fits under cabinets easier and doesn't require as close attention to flow rates. I will say plumbing the UV right was one of the biggest challenges with all of these installs. You need to install it in a manner where air doesn't get caught in the UV sterilizer and it's easy to change the bulb later. You get to see how we did that on seven of eight tanks, the neat aquatics UV brackets on most of them. The primary temperature or thermal energy control will be the room's HVAC, which keeps the room at about 70 degrees year round. Secondary heat provided by two 300 watt BRS titanium heaters and the apex to control them with innovative marine Helios controllers as backup redundancy. Heater failure is a top tank killer, so we have dual apex temp probes as well as an ambient room temp probe. These tanks are protected from heater failure. On particularly hot days when the studio doors are left closed, the HVAC doesn't manage to cool this room well and it can get hot. Particularly worrisome is the weekends where no one's here. Our solution is the Tunes Aqua Chic fans. A fan like this in evaporation can solve a vast majority of cooling issues on their own. An apex alarm will tell us to come save the tanks if the fan isn't enough. Environmental management is handled with a centralized controller backed by the individual pieces of equipment controllers for redundancy. Light, gas exchange, chemistry, water movement, nutrition, pollution, parasite, and thermal energy systems are actively managed. Automatic redundancy and local or remote alarms in the event of equipment requiring maintenance, equipment failure, leaks, and power outages. Much of the Apex solution mounted in the adaptive reef mini control boards that fit underneath the stand. Power bricks mounted with Ecotex universal power supply mounts. Water tubes mounted with Neat Aquatics RO tubing brackets. Next to the tank we use the adaptive reef interface boards which give at tank access to important parameters and controls via low cost Amazon Fire 10 and Silk browser that accesses Neptune Fusion. The interface board comes with a switch module for instant control of the tank, like feed modes, maintenance modes, push button water changes, cabinet lights, and toggles for things like display lights, or a single access point to turn everything on the entire tank on and off with the flip of a switch. Most of this is easy to do with Apex tasks, but we'll share the Apex settings for everything as the series progresses. That's the mission with the Twilight Predator tank, the unique environmental challenges and how we intend to handle them. What's coming is the fruits of success, how-tos, and how do we manage the inevitable surprises. Next week, it's time to meet the Chromis School Tank. BRS TV subscribers get to see it all in the full 52SE playlist right here.